This huge beast has rows of sharp white teeth lining the inside of his gargantuan jaw. <gasps> it moved slowly through the mud, then spotted its prey and slithered in for the kill. Now within striking distance, the beast picks up tremendous speed and it's no! <laughs> What's up? Oh, Smedley, you okay? I am sorry, man. I didn't mean to scare you like that. Uh, no, I was practicing my bungee jumping, see? Ah! <laughs> now, wait a minute. Hold on. Back up. I know you better than that. I've known you way too long. Now, what's the deal? Something's got you spooked, man. Well, okay, I've been reading about this monster. They say it's really out there. Uh, it's supposed to be deadly in the water and quick on land and has, has a long tail and sharp teeth. And when it bites, it chomps down with power and fury and... They call the hideous creature Rotagilla. Rotagilla? What is that? I mean, I've never heard. No, no, stop. No questions. Just stop right there. You must find this monster. I can't take it knowing he's out there somewhere just waiting. You must find Rotagilla. In search of monsters, whether we like it or not. If there's an animal to be found, you're probably gonna find it at the Lowry Park Zoo. So let's go. Rota Gila, here we come. Tom Smedley. In search of the elusive beast. Excuse me, maybe you could help me. Uh, big, I'm looking for something big. Uh, sharp teeth. Smells bad? No? Do you know where the restroom is? No, okay. Excuse me, if I could have just have a word with you guys. If, have you seen it? Hello? Hello? Just a, a creature? Have you seen something a lot bigger than you with teeth and... Hello? Excuse me. I had better cooperation with the handlers. Hello? Okay, never mind. I'll leave you alone. Hello, maybe you could help me. What's your name? I'm Sam Winslow. Hi, Sam. Um, I'm looking for strange and unusual creatures around here. We've got some really strange, unusual animals here in the Naked Mole Rat exhibit. Oh, the what? Naked Mole Rat exhibit. I gotta see this. Not quite Rotogilla, but uh, it sounds interesting. Okay, Sam, let me get this straight. You did say naked mole rats? Yep, these are them. They uh, spend their entire lives underground, so they don't have any need for fur or uh, sweat glands or any layers of fat. They can regulate their temperature by uh, where they live in the tunnel. They have to stay around 82, 83 degrees, and they can vent their tunnels, or they just go to levels that uh, have that right temperature for them. Now, their teeth are rather large. What do they use for? Well, they use the teeth for gnawing on the tubers and roots that make up their diet, and they can also dig through really hard clay soil, so that's the way they keep them worn down like all rodents do. <laughs> and they're moving backwards a lot and kicking their feet. I guess that's digging? Right. That's the way they dig their, uh, their tunnels, by backing the dirt out of their holes. I thought it was more like a moonwalk move. This guy's really jamming right here. Well, these are fascinating creatures. Thanks a lot, Sam. Our pleasure. All right, now it's not exactly what I'm looking for, though. Sharp teeth, yes, but it needs to be big. All right, Rota Gila, Gila, Gorilla, Apes, Chimpanzees. The... Come on. We are in front of a very fascinating creature right now, and they're called mandrills. Tell us about these guys. Well, the mandrills are a member of the monkey family. Uh, you may have heard them referred to as mandrel baboons, but actually they're quite unique. They've just been given their own family, so they're not quite baboons either. They differ quite a bit, as you can tell. Their faces are very colorful. Yeah. Um, now tell us about, they have um, five fingers just like we do, huh? Their hands look remarkably like ours, a little hairier. They no claws in their fingernails. No claws, fingernails, just like we have, and they trim them and groom them and clean underneath their fingernails like we do. Now these guys are kind of looking at me and they're bobbing their heads and they're kind of making arm gestures. What's that all about? That's threatening behavior. We're standing, it's comparable towards a group of strangers standing on your front porch. So they're like, hey, 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 hey! Exactly, that's exactly what he's doing and he'll do a head bob or you'll see a little head twist and that's just saying back off, I'm the boss, who are you, and watch your step with me. Right. I saw one of these earlier too, so I must like the show. All right, Melissa, what do you have there? This is called an enrichment treat board, and what we do is we rub marshmallow cream, just a little bit, some nice peanut butter, mm. raisins, sometimes mealworms, other insects such as crickets. And what they do is we'll hang this on the back of their exhibit on the fence, and then they'll use their very meticulous little fingers, and they'll pick each little treat out of the board and by the time we get to it the next morning it's usually pretty clean so 
Well, I was getting pretty hungry until you said crickets there. That was looking pretty good. So this basically just keeps them stimulated, not only their hands, but their mind too, so they're not bored. Right, because all day in the wild, they would be foraging around for insects and um, little food items. So we need to keep them enriched in captivity. That's kind of like playtime. Chimpanzees right now. Now, Marcy, tell us about the chimpanzee. What do they like to eat? Well, they eat all types of fruits and vegetables. As you can see, we have a number of nice seasonal fruits for them. Mm. And um, I use a glove when I'm feeding them because, like all primates, they can catch all our colds and all our germs, so it's important to have extremely clean hands and food for them. We were looking earlier at the mandrills with, a, you know, with dominant ones and different personalities. How about the chimps? Are they like that? Yes, they sure are. The animal you see sitting on our rock here is our male, and he's the dominant animal. He will also eat first, and sometimes if he can get away with it, he'll bluff the girls out of their food. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> but they do eat several times a day, and we make sure everyone gets enough. How old can uh, chimpanzees grow up to be? They can live into their 50s. Really? Yes. They have a lifespan very similar to us, and their young stay with the parents for a long time, just as our children do. Now, their arms may not look like it because they're covered with all that fur, but those are pretty strong arms, aren't they? Extremely strong. Mostly upper body strength, much more strong than a man of comparable weight. Hey, Marcy, how come clapping will upset the chimpanzees? Well, we clap often when we're happy or we like something, but chimpanzees actually clap when they're upset, especially the male chimpanzees. Oh. And so when you see Herman clapping, it's usually because something has aggravated him. And if you clap back, he believes that you're angry or upset with him, and that makes him more upset. So that's why we ask people not to clap. That makes sense. What about banging on the chest? Do chimps do that, or is that some, somebody else? No, those are gorillas, and it's a bluff, but it's a pretty impressive one. Yeah. But another thing that's different is we often smile, and you can see our teeth when we're smiling. But when chimps smile and show their teeth, actually, again, they're upset or they're afraid, and they're showing you their teeth. No rotogilla yet, but we did find something else. What are these guys? These are orangutans. These come from the tropical rainforest of Borneo. And they're not monkeys? No, they are apes. There are several differences between monkeys and apes. One of the easiest way to tell is monkeys have tails and apes do not. All right. And the big guy over here has got big flaps of something on his face. What's the deal with him? Those are his cheek pouches, and adult male orangutans get them. It's a sign to the females that this is an adult male, kind of like when a man grows a beard, he's all grown up. So you can tell the difference between the two. Correct. Well, Marcy, we appreciate all your help, and all I need uh, to know right now is where can I find Rotagilla? What, please? Rotagilla. I, I don't know. Smedley's looking for Rotagilla. Uh, have you tried the gift shop? Gift shop. Thanks. Marcy knows. Smedley. I've been looking, man. I can't find your monster anywhere, okay? Well, you haven't looked hard enough. Yes, I am. I mean, I, I need a little something to go on here. You gotta help me out. I mean, is it bigger than a monkey? Does it uh, smell like a donkey? Can it fly like a bird? Can it lay a smelling- Excuse me, Dr. Seuss. For your information, uh, <clears throat> since no pictures came with my book, I have made a sketch based upon what I've read so far. Okay, well, let's see it. I need some help. Brace yourself and prepare for the first glimpse of the most dangerous creature alive. Rotagella. Uh, <laughs> uh, buddy, I hate to break this to you. It looks a little too big to be real. I mean, is it stepping on a car? Well, I sort of added that and the fire for dramatic effect. But you don't know what the beast is capable of. But now go. Continue your search. Be gone. We must continue to look. We must. Find Rotogilla. David D. TV, a Smedley production, will be back after these messages.
What? We're on? <laughs> and now back to David DTV. Hey, hey, Smedley, check this out. So far on the show, we've seen mandrills, orangutans, chimpanzees, naked mole rats, goats, we got pigs, hey, we got... Excuse me, Dr. Doolittle, I uh, hate to interrupt, but where is my monster? Ah, uh, Smedley, uh, about your monster, listen, I talk to a lot of animal experts here, and uh, quite honestly, they're laughing, man. None of them have ever heard of Rotogilla. You know, I got the same results when I tried doing a show on the Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot, or honest politicians. That's why this time, I am gonna help you in your search. Oh great, he's gonna help me. I can't wait to hear this. Since uh, Rotogilla has a huge appetite, I'm making you a special apparatus that will attract our friend to you like a fly to honey. Feast your eyes on the pizza necklace. Come on, where are you going? How can anyone resist a necklace made out of pizza? <sighs> oh well. Hmm, can't let these babies go to waste. Say anything to anybody watching at home? Oh, biscuit, okay. I heard that. More biscuits. I want you to meet Leanne now. Now, Leanne, what's your uh, title here? I'm a zookeeper of the Florida Mammal Section. Okay, the Lowry Park Zoo, and you have two of your friends here, and they are large friends. Who are these guys? This is Buffett, and this is New Bob. Buffett, how did how did it get that name? Buffett's named after Jimmy Buffett. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Cheeseburger in Paradise, very cool. <laughs> and how about New Bob? New Bob was found on New Year's Day by a guy named Bob. Very cool. Now, how, how big are these things? How much do they weigh? Um, Buffett here, he weighs about 1,400 pounds, and New Bob's about 900. Now they're moving real slow, they're kind of lethargic, hanging out. Are they, are, do they always move slow like this? Oh no, they can move about 21 feet, 22 feet per second, which is about 15 miles an hour. So they can go pretty quick when they need to. They sure can. All right, now what do we have here? Uh, these are monkey biscuits. This is um, biscuits we feed to the monkeys, and um, it's a real treat for these guys. I really like them. Look at Buffett chowing down. What a cool looking mouth, that is unbelievable. Now I noticed there's uh, not too many teeth going on in there. What, what kind of stuff do they eat all day? We feed them this romaine lettuce, we feed them carrots, and occasionally cabbage. Um, they have a soft palate right up front, but they do have molars in the back. So if you're out there swimming or boating and you see one of these things, you're not gonna get bitten or attacked by these, are you? No, um, they are pretty curious, but animals in the wild usually will swim by you. Um, if they're not provoked, they'll just gently swim by you and be fine. Yeah, and we're supposed to leave them alone. Even though they're very cool, you want to get close, never, never touch. Now, how much do these things have to eat to stay this huge? I'm not talking a diet or offending anybody down there. You're, you're very attractive in the water. 10% of their body weight. These guys eat about 120 pounds of romaine a piece a day. 120 pounds of this a day? Yep. Main course this afternoon in the diner, lettuce, and lots of it. Now these guys are just gigantic. They're almost the size of a boat. It's gotta be pretty tough taking care of them, huh? Yeah, uh, we have special areas in the back where we take care of them. Uh, we can weigh them in the back. Uh, we don't sedate them at all, so we need quite a few people to handle them. Um, when they're on their backs, they can touch their nose to their tail. Really? They're pretty flexible, yeah. Now, tell us about the markings on this one. I, I noticed a couple of circles in the number 52. Why is that? Newbot was out at a staging area where he was trying to be acclimated to the wild so we can someday release him. And the 52 is just the number that identifies him so when they, they are seen in the wild, they will know who he is. And the circles right here are where his pit tags are and it's kind of like a barcode and they scan a gun across it and it shows um, what number he is and they know for sure that that's new Bob. Kind of like at the checkout line at a grocery store when they go sure. beep with a loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So new Bob, you're going to be uh, going back to the wild pretty soon then, huh? Yep. Hey Leanne, thanks for letting us hang with the manatees with you. Oh, no problem. Hey, one more thing before we go. Um, where's the uh, Rotagilla exhibit here? The what? Rotagilla, big monster. I don't think we have one of those. You sure? Yeah. Okay. What many people don't know about manatees, they can also perform some fascinating tricks. How long can you hold your breath? I mean, really. I don't see scuba tanks under that fur. Did you know that otters use their whiskers to help find fish? 
It's true. Hello? <laughs> Ace Medley. Check it out. I don't have your monster, but I found otters. You know, we could, do, we could do something with otters. How's that? All four of their feet are webbed, helps them swim. They like to eat fish and uh, crawfish and even frogs. So what do you say we stick with the otters and just forget your uh, rotogilla? Just forget it. Forget rotogilla and leave it out there, stalking people, waiting for its prey, waiting to pounce out and bite me or anyone else for that matter? No, <laughs> like the otters. I don't think so. Come on, please. Okay, okay. Well, since we are tracking a very dangerous monster, I'm going to do my part by putting the show in monster movie mode. What? Monster movie mode? <laughs> yes, allow me to demonstrate. Oh no, it's Rosagilla. Run for the hills. Call Gamera. The city is doomed. We're coming back with more David DTV right after these messages. And now, back to more David D. TV. Hey, Smedley, you think that sounded like me? That's it. I can't, I can't do it anymore, Smedley. There is no creature. There is no monster. There is no Rotogilla, okay? You know, I'm sorry to hear that you feel this way because I had a special surprise planned for you when you captured the beast. Look at uh, this. There. But, oh, that's nice. I mean... Hey, Smedley... Where did you get all the information on this monster? Oh, I got it from this book that I bought. Really cheap, too. Only 10 cents at a garage sale. Did, did you notice anything unusual about this book? Uh, only that some of the pages were ripped out and taped back in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, were any of those pages backwards or maybe even upside down? Uh, yeah, so what's your point? Look, look. Start at this side. A. L L I G A T O R. <laughs> alligator. Reverse it. Rotagilla backwards is alligator. Look. I mean, this whole time, I've been looking for this monster, and it's been some figment of your imagination. Yeah, isn't that, uh, isn't that right? That's, uh, that's kind of funny, you know? <laughs> I would like you to meet right now, Richard. Not this guy, but this guy. How you doing, Richard? Oh, can you shake my hand? Oh, yeah. all right, good. Now, what do we have here? This is a baby American alligator. An American alligator, cool. Now, how old is this one? This one is approximately six months old. Now, I know there's some bigger guys hanging around here somewhere. How big is this guy gonna get? Six to 10 feet on the average. <laughs> six to 10 feet. What does he eat? He eats insects and fish at this size, and then they grow up and eat small mammals and birds. I just like to go on record by saying, I am not a small mammal. Okay. Now, this guy doesn't have a name, does he? No, he does not. Can we name him now? Sure. Um, Rotagila, maybe? Okay. Now, how fast can these guys go? About 25 miles per hour on land for a very short distance. Like how short? Um, a couple hundred feet. Now, if you ever, for some strange reason, bump into an alligator out in the wild, obviously probably a little bigger than this because you'll run into it, um, what do you recommend? Turn around and walk away. Good advice from Richard, a man who knows. Turn around and walk away. Now, you said you feed this guy insects and fish. Now, when you see an alligator out in the wild, never feed that, right? Correct. No, never feed the alligators in the wild. What other stuff can you tell us about gators? Well, 
when they're young like this, they're banded for camouflage, and when they get older, they turn almost a greenish black color or brown. When you say banded, you mean these little marks right here? Yes, yeah, the yellow banding. Very decorative, very stylish, but you're going to lose it, unfortunately. And I noticed the eyelids, um, they, they blink really funky. What is that all about? Well, they have these two different types of eyelids, one just like ours that shuts the eye, and then they have this clear eyelid that works like a scuba mask. It goes from side, and then they can go underwater and see really well underwater. Now, when they steer themselves underwater, are they steering with their feet or their tail? They use their tail primarily, and they swim with their tail. Their feet are webbed, but they do not use them for swimming. They fold them back. Now, I know gators are hatched out of eggs, right? That's correct. Now, when the mommy gator lays the eggs, does it bury them? Is it, is it under, the, under the land, or, or how do they do that? It's buried beneath vegetation that she gathers up for it. How many at one time uh, can be hatched? 25 to 60. Wow, that's a lot of little gators running around. That's correct. Watch your toes. Watch your toes. Did you know that gators spend just as much time on land as they do in the water? About 50-50. It's true. Another interesting thing about the alligators is they were nearly hunted to extinction up to the 50s when the Endangered Species Act took over in the 70s. They were protected completely, and when that happened, their numbers came back to about a million in the state of Florida. Hey, this is kind of cool. I didn't know this. In alligators and some other reptiles, the temperature where the eggs are hanging out determines whether you're going to get a boy or a girl. In other words, if the temperature's below 86, kind of chilly outside, you'll probably end up with gals. If it's above 90, you'll probably get boys. Not bad. Okay, don't get too close to your TV. We've got snakes. Oh my gosh, Richard, I'm gonna let you hold on to the snake. What kind of snake is this? This is called an Eastern Indigo, a very rare snake in Florida and a protected species. This is phenomenal. Look at the skin. Can I touch it? Sure. All right, you don't mind. I should have asked you first, not Richard. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the snake. Does it uh, bite? Well, they're generally a pretty docile species, even the wild ones. However, if you did grab one, it would bite you. Okay. It's non-poisonous, so you don't have to worry about that. And they are also the North America's largest snake. It is pretty big. Not as big as the boa constrictor, though. No, but boa constrictors aren't from Florida, so. <laughs> we don't have to worry about running into those. Exactly. What snakes do we have to run, uh, worry about running into out there? Well, you have to be careful when you're in the woods. Um, some of the snakes you have to worry about are the Eastern Diamondback, the cottonmouth water moccasin and the pygmy rattlesnake and maybe even the coral snake but all these snakes are very secretive and if you turn around walk away if you leave them alone your chances of being bitten are very rare so they're not aggressive they won't come after you they're only aggressive if you grab them <laughs> and i don't think we have to worry about that now do we did you know that more people are killed by bee stings than they are by venomous snake bites <laughs> it's true keeps sticking its tongue out at the camera. Is it being rude? What's the deal? No, that's it sensing the air and basically pulling air particles in to an organ called the Jacobson's organ. And this organ sends the information to the brain, but it's very similar to our smell. Oh, so when a snake is sticking its tongue out at you, it's not necessarily uh, being rude or anything. It's just checking out how you smell, huh? Absolutely. Whoa, see, I didn't know that. Very cool. Oh, sorry. Did you know that more people in Tampa Bay are actually killed by lightning strikes than they are by venomous snake bites? It's true! This is an unbelievable snake. When the light hits it a certain way, it almost has a, a rainbow look to it. That's quite right. We call that iridescence. When... It's kind of hissing a little bit. Does that mean it's angry? No, it's just a little scared, probably. Well, you know, we got the David D cameras on it pretty close. He's probably a little camera shy. Correct just like me. Is this full grown? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, they get uh, actually around eight feet. It gets bigger than this? Yes, this is about six foot now. Okay, Richard, I'm gonna let uh, you handle the snake and I'm just gonna go over to the nice safe bird exhibit. Okay. Thanks for your time. Uh, we won't shake hands. <laughs> right, there you go, Smedley. Everything you've ever wanted to know about animals. Now, Quit sulking, Smedley. I'm not mad at you anymore, okay? Granted, it was a wild goose chase, but I'm over it, all right? Come on, bud. Was it something I said? No, you said in something. What? Oh, man! Oh, this, this is never going to come out. This is just beautiful. Great! If Smedley doesn't break anything, we'll be back with more after this.
We're back. More David D. TV. <laughs> I'm sorry, Smelly. When you think about it, it really is kind of funny, though. I mean, really. Rotagilla. <laughs> you got to feel a little bit foolish. I mean, you know. Yeah, okay. Isn't it uh, time for you to go now? Oh, you're right. I'll see you. Hmm. Foolish. Yeah, I guess a little bit foolish. But you got to admit, could have happened. I mean... What's so far-fetched about a giant monster that runs around and eats people? I mean, you know, that could happen every day. Just about. What's that? What? Whoa! Woo! Rodagilla! 